Now, uh, would like to go back to Reporters Without Borders and tell them that, come back again on this analysis. What's the analysis? The analysis is that um, Ghanaian uh, media has gone down in the, in the ratings. We've seen the ratings. We've seen the, the factors that they use in terms of democracy, government, parliament, and all of that. Uh, and they said that Ghanaian media has gone down from 30 to 60 and Burkina Faso is better. We beg to differ. That's not possible. That's not correct. So reporters without borders must have another look at it. It may well be that some of the people who are doing the research have personal interest in their outcomes. They want outcomes that show something, in particular about President Akufuado. Yes, I'll say it. In particular, they want a research that shows something about Akufuado. Because if you don't want that, how do you say that Burkina Faso is a military junta? In Burkina Faso, there's no parliament has been suspended in Burkina Faso. The constitution has been overthrown. The constitution out of which journalism practice is, is, is expressed. The constitution of any country, with guarantee, any constitution that guarantees fundamental human rights, is the basis on which the expression of freedom of rights and freedom of publication is given. Where a country has suspended the constitution, they have only restored the judiciary. And by the way, when the military people come, they only always restore the judiciary. Burkina Faso is a country in military turmoil, in political turmoil, with a military junta that is able to shut the airspace so that airplanes cannot fly over their country, an international protocol that is observed by all countries who are members of the Committee of Nations. Burkina Faso, where the military, can you see him here? He's the, he's the leader of Burkina Faso, a military junta. Which media house in Burkina Faso can publish any story that differs in opinion? from the military junta. How can you even make that comparison? Burkina Faso, you cannot take a newspaper in Burkina Faso today that is critical of the military junta. Tomorrow morning, go to the newspaper stands and see there are several newspapers, several electronic broadcasters, radio and television that take a view that are completely adverse with the views of the government. They may interview people, which is okay, but they also take a view and take a posture. There are radio stations in Ghana today. Uh, ne never mind, forget about Radio Gold. Never mind about Radio Gold, who has been restored. But there are radio stations whose license were not taken by the National Communication Authority, who have taken a posture of reporting against the government, which is okay. That is, is part of the democracy. That's happening. How can you look at a situation like that and isolate issues about the unfortunate and gruesome murder of Ahmed Swa and the, the conversations Kennedy and Japan had around uh, who, who he, what, what did he call it? Uh, who is searching the searcher or something like that. He, he, he had a theme, who is watching the watchman, something like that. And he carried this as personal crusade across the country, showing videos of the evidence of what he was talking about against the investigative team. And, it, it, and it's true, he did. He called for attack on Ahmed Swale, which was unfortunate, which is condemnable. How can these two events then take Ghana below Burkina Faso, which has a military junta. That's, that's a fallacy. That's a fallacy. And I, 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 I will indeed remark that the people who did this research must have had something, some outcome they were looking for. If they don't have an outcome you're looking for, it's only when you have an outcome you're looking for and you're emotional about it, that you make such ridiculous outcomes that Burkina Faso media is, is freer, is plural, than media in Ghana. Nobody will even believe that. And that's why we say that it's an anthropological falsity and it's a sociological fallacy. It's not possible. It's not true. It's not correct. It's wrong. No, nowhere in the world. In fact, if you, if you go anywhere and you show this to an analyst who doesn't know... Uh, any of the details, and you say one country has military rule, one country has 30 years of constitutionalism, and he'll come to the conclusion that the country with military rule, where all opinion is single, there, there, there's a monolithic opinion in, in Burkina Faso today, you cannot speak about the, the military junta. They have suspended parliament. There's no forum for parliament to discuss the things they do. There's, there's, no, there's no parliamentary reporter in Burkina Faso because there's no parliament to cover. The only thing you cover is the military junta. And reporters without borders want to tell us that the military junta, in the, in the situation of the military junta, the media are freer there. No, no, it's not possible. It's not true. We appreciate the work that they did. Yes, we think that Ghana must improve in all other aspects of media, especially the economic and the, and the, the economic independence of journalists. But to come to the conclusion that Burkina Faso journalists are freer than Ghanaian journalists, say they have a better plural media context environment, it's fallacy. It's not correct. It's not true. And we dare say that these reporters with our borders may have had an emotional interest in getting a certain outcome about Ghana. That's really the point we are making in this editorial. Reporters without borders, you definitely did have an emotional uh, interest in securing a certain outcome about Ghana to show that Ghana, because you, you want to complain 
So yeah, you can complain, there's no problem. But the way you are emotional, that's what has led you to the ridiculous conclusion that a military junta's country as Burkina Faso, for, even forget about the military junta, Burkina Faso, even when they were under constitutional rule and a blaze campuari, they didn't have plural media. Burkina, over the last 40 years, have not had free media from Captain Thomas Sankara to the Medal of Sankara to the military junta imposed by Blaise Kampuari for several years. He ruled with an iron hand. He was chased out of the country and then a coup occurred and then there was a counter coup by the Kampuari people and that counter coup failed and the junta is now here and they've sworn in themselves as president of, of Burkina Faso. They have had to swear themselves in as president. In that kind of situation, in that kind of environment, show me one sentence from a newspaper in Burkina Faso that is critical of the government. So that is even assessing the government's policy independently. You will not find it because you can't find it. When Ghana was under military junta in 1987, Prince Park was banned. You can't, you can't do anything. And that's what happens with military juntas all over the world. So how can they come and say that this military junta is better the situation there is better than the situation in Ghana. It's not possible. It's a big fallacy. It's false. And we, are, we have to advise them. When you do these things, don't add emotions to it. Don't, don't look for outcomes. Don't fish for outcomes. Don't be an octopus that is just looking for outcomes. No. That's what reporters without borders were doing. They were fishing for an outcome. That's why they came out with this particular ridiculous outcome. The work they did is good. They should continue doing their work. This is good work to assess the, the strength and the independence of media around Africa. That's, that's excellent work. But because some of them were influenced by emotions to develop a certain outcome. That's why they say Burkina Faso, the military junta, is freer than Akufado's Ghana because they want to say something about Akufado. That's negative, which is okay. You can do that, but do that on some sensible analysis, some sensible, but not this ridiculous conclusion that you draw that Burkina Faso media is freer than Ghanaian media. It's, it's totally ridiculous. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't work. It doesn't, nobody's going to believe that. And when you go deep into the report, as soon as the report came out, the impression was that Ghanaian media have security problems and the, uh, my friend Caleb Kuda's situation and all of that. Yeah, all of that is worrisome, if you like. But they didn't tell us at the beginning that it was really about the nature of economic independence that Ghanaian journalists don't seem to have. That's why the ratings have come down upon the introduction of a new criteria. They didn't tell us that we needed to go into the report to see that. That, for me, is the high point of the report. So, never mind. Now we go into the report and you see that countries like Burkina Faso are scoring better than Ghana. And that's where you see it gets very, very ridiculous. So our small 2 persuasive commentary is that reporters without borders come again. Say it again. Because the way you've said it, you've left something that indicates your emotions. You've left something in that indicates your bias. You've left something in that indicates or gives us a suspicion that you were looking and fishing for a certain outcome about Ghana. That's, that's what you have done. You were fishing for a certain outcome about Ghana. That's why you end up with a ridiculous proposition that Burkina Faso media is freer than Ghanaian media. That's the end of our story for today. Okay, rooted in, 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 should I call it, the, the recent, modern, you know, journalistic trends in Ghana. You're deeply rooted. Uh, Since uh, we went from the state-owned radio mm, to private, yeah, you yeah. know, you, you, you have a, a very strong history then. And I've been following, yes. Uh, I've, been, I've been engaged with it. I've entangled myself with it. Mm -hmm. and, and now I'm excited about the new epoch, which is the digital migration, yeah, yeah. which hopefully should make things much, much better. Mm -hmm. uh, my desire is to see people leave the university with top grades and be able to come into media as it was by the, uh, towards the end of the uh, 20th century, 1999, 2000. It used to be like that. But now uh, the banks came, took over and took our people and all of that. I'm, I'm hoping for the day when people will come back. Mm. You what know? made you stay? Because like you said, the banks came and took the people. Mm. And, and when, I, when I think about the, the, the pool of people that started then... Everyone is gone. Everyone is gone. Yeah. What made you stay? I'm still here. <laughs> I think basically... Yeah, just a lot. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, like I like the job. I managed to go back to school in many different dimensions so i am able to squeeze in other things to do and also maximize the opportunities that the job can give and i've also taken a personal crusade that in my lifetime mm. i will see the restoration of media practice as a top job in ghana amen because I've Show some love, man. <laughs> <laughs> i love that I love that. I travel yeah. around and I see that media is top everywhere. So yep. I began to research into yep. why Ghana is so. And I blame the colonial masters for it. Mm. So I, I found a story uh, in my research that when people want to become doctors, 
and they're leaving secondary school. The medical school is requiring the top grades of them. Mm -hmm. When people want to become lawyers, they're mm -hmm. requiring the top grades of them. Mm -hmm. Even in the old days, when you wanted to become a priest, an orthodox priest, mm -hmm. you're required to get the top grades. Mm -hmm. But when you wanted to become a journalist, there was no such requirement. Mm -hmm. And I look at a colonial master's country, and it's not the case. Mm -hmm. You go to England and America and, and France and all of those places, the, the requirements for studying journalism, the same requirements for studying medicine mm -hmm. and, and, and law and all of that. So. I, I then go on to think, why did the colonial master make it so? Then I realized that he saw the media as a tool for control. And so he didn't want the media practitioners to be, to be such independent-minded as to hmm. remove his control. Hmm. Then I noticed that his first level of battle in colonial Ghana was against people who had come with good education like Kwame Nkrumah and co, who set up newspapers, the evening news and all of that. But then comes my disappointment. So the colonial authority is gone. The local authority takes over, and Kroma and Co., and they sort of maintain the status quo when mm. it comes to journalism. They, they didn't upgrade. So mm -hmm. that's what I mean by in my lifetime, I'd like to see journalism restored as a top job in Ghana. I love you, man. <laughs> Kill them, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're so right. You're so right, you know. If we fix what? journalism, mm -hmm. we will fix the politics. We will fix the roads. We will fix everything. Mm. Because the reason why our country suffers is because the people who are telling the story mm -hmm. either don't have the competence, the capacity, mm -hmm. or, or they don't, just don't have the effrontery and the resources to tell it. Mm. So you're going to have 29,000 polling stations around the country on the 7th of December. No media house will be able to cover 29,000 polling yeah. stations. Yeah. No media house has helicopter. No media house has anything. But you can't, the American elections will be fairer. The British elections will be fairer because the media can cover it. And they are independent. And they are well-resourced. And so you, don't do, you can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. Ghana mm -hmm. has come the way we have come because of even the media that we call fragile. And when I went to Ivory Coast to interview Laurent Gbagbo, which was one of my, my big interviews in this career, he was then president of La Côte d'Ivoire, and the elections had gone bad. Then we found the problem in Ivory Coast. And among ourselves, the Ghanaian journalists who went for this event, we were laughing at the Ivorians mm. because they, they, they don't have any private radio station. This is 2013. Ivory Coast has no private radio station. So the election results is broadcast by the state broadcaster. Mm. So when we went to discuss with their media that, let's understand your dispute. So where did the results come from? They said they came from the UN. We said UN? They mm. said yes. So uh, um, Lassani Watara took his results from the UN, and Babo took his results from some electoral commission. So okay, what did the media say? They did not have any media. Wow. We said, oh, wow. the private radio, no. Private TV, no. We said, then you're going to have this kind of elections. Yeah. So we yeah. were excited about our country. And if you take it further, that is what, that the difference between Britain and Ghana in terms of elections and in terms of good governance is the media. And the colonial master didn't want that to happen. Mm. He was not interested in good governance. Mm. So he was interested in lawyers who he can use to do something. He was interested in doctors who take care of their children. But the media, he, was, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs>